October 4, 1961. Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, awaits the arrival of a distinguished visitor. The American capital makes ready to greet His Excellency, El Farid Ibrahim Abu, President of the Sudan. He is the first leader of the Sudan to make an official state visit to the United States. President Aboud is arriving aboard the American presidential jetliner, which flew to Khartoum to carry President Kennedy's honored guest to America. Waiting to welcome him as soon as he sets foot on American soil is President John F. Kennedy. A group of Sudanese students have come to welcome the president of their country. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, members of your party, I wish to express on behalf of the people of the United States our great satisfaction in welcoming you to our country. This is the first occasion in the history of the Sudan that a leader of your country has come to visit the United States. We welcome you also because you have set an example of a country with eight neighbors, all of whom live at peace with you and with each other. You have set a standard for your continent and indeed uh, in that sense for the world. We want you to know that your ministers and yourself will be most welcome. And we hope that when you depart, you will carry with you a very real appreciation of the warm feeling of friendship that our country feels for yours. Mr. President. President Aboud addresses President Kennedy and the American people. We couple our congratulations to you and to the American people with our sincere thanks and appreciation for your kind invitation which we were fortunate in being able to accept on behalf of the Sudan. We will always remember that you and the American people, even before the Sudan achieved independence, have readily shown us sincere friendship and fraternity. You have sent us missions of goodwill. You have supported our candidacy in the United Nations, and you have furthered cooperation between our two nations on an exemplary and disinterested basis. <laughs> President Aboud is en route to the center of Washington, escorted by a full dress parade. A crowd of enthusiastic well-wishes cheer President Abu. During his stay in Washington, President Abu will make his home at the Blair House, the special residence for guests of the American president. President Kennedy takes his leave from President Aboud and returns to his own residence, the White House.
memorial to Abraham Lincoln, one of America's best-loved presidents, is visited first by President Abood. The Lincoln Memorial is a shrine for all visitors to Washington, whether from the United States or other lands, ordinary citizens or national leaders. Inside the memorial stands a monumental statue of Abraham Lincoln. President Abood honors the memory of the president who gave the slaves in America their freedom 100 years ago. That evening, a state dinner is held by President and Mrs. Kennedy at the White House in honor of President Abu. Outstanding Americans are invited to meet the Sudanese leader. President and Mrs. Kennedy appear with their guest of honor and Ambassador and Mrs. Osman El Hadari of the Sudan. Next morning, President Abood starts his day with a ride through Washington. Chief of Protocol, Angier Biddle Duke, points out the Capitol building, seat of the legislative branch of the government. The presidential party ends its sightseeing tour at the White House. There, President Kennedy will confer with President Abu. Representatives of the Sudanese, American and world press are present to report the meeting of the two leaders. President Kennedy and President Aboud, with his Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ahmed Kerr, discuss a number of subjects of mutual interest. The two presidents share a common concern for the preservation of world peace and a common reliance on the United Nations as the most effective instrument for maintaining peace. They agree on expanding their cooperation to further economic development in the Sudan. The two leaders affirm the right of peoples of every continent to self-determination. The Islamic Center is among Washington's most graceful buildings and is a symbol of Islamic unity. President Aboud arrives at the Washington Mosque, which is a place of worship for all people of Islamic faith in Washington. All Islamic states participated in the building of the mosque and share in its program to increase American understanding of Islam. President Abood is accompanied by many distinguished members of the Islamic community in Washington, including ambassadors of ten nations to the United States.
Later that day, a reception in honor of President Abood is given by His Excellency, the Sudanese Ambassador to the United States. Many diplomatic and official dignitaries are present. The reception gives evidence of the sincere respect and appreciation for the Sudan and its president. The tables are decorated with unusual figures carved from ice. Prominent is the rhinoceros, symbol of the Sudan. The National Zoological Park holds an unusual interest for the Sudanese visitors. President Aboud is making a gift to the Zoological Park of two migratory cranes and four demoiselle cranes from the Sudan. The rare gift is highly valued because these are the first migratory cranes the Zoological Park has had in 30 years. The National Press Club is a meeting and working place for some of the most influential newsmen and journalists in the world. The Press Club, which has served as a forum for world leaders for more than 50 years, has invited President Aboud to address its members. In his address, President Aboud states that his is a peaceful country devoid of territorial ambitions. He affirms the Sudan's support for complete and general disarmament and its opposition to nuclear tests by any nation. He further states that the Sudan supports the principle of self-determination as a solution for international problems and opposes colonialism in all its forms. That evening, President Aboud is hosted a banquet in honor of President Kennedy. President Aboud is first to greet his guest of honor. More than 500 distinguished American officials and members of the Washington Diplomatic Corps attend the banquet at President Aboud's invitation. Prominent are Secretary of State Dean Rusk and Mrs. Rusk. In a toast to President Kennedy, the host states that he has found America aware of African aspirations and willing to cooperate in achieving them on a basis of mutual confidence and respect. For President Aboud, this evening ends his Washington visit. The next morning, he flies to Los Angeles, 2,300 miles away. Los Angeles is the great metropolis of the West. Home of over five million people, the spreading city is one of the largest in area in the world. President Aboud, himself from a vast country in a vast continent, congratulates the citizens on the way in which they conduct the affairs of this huge city. Because of the great spread of the city, President Aboud uses a helicopter to travel in the Los Angeles area. The helicopter takes President Aboud to Disneyland, where the American movie maker Walt Disney has created an entire city out of his imagination. Inspired by America's past and children's literature and his own films, Disney has put together a vast amusement park known throughout America. President Aboud is about to take a ride on a monorail 
a unique kind of train which goes through the air balanced on a single rail. The flying train passes another unusual conveyance, the cable car, like the ones sometimes used to carry people to mountaintops. President Abood next visits California State Polytechnic College, which has a program emphasizing agriculture and animal husbandry. A special horse show is held on the college grounds in honor of the Sudanese leader. Arabian gelding, Tezadi, displays its special talents for President Abu. The college owns 60 of the finest Arabian horses in the United States. rich agricultural land is part of Fresno State College, which has a number of Sudanese graduates. The dean of the college conducts the president's party through the campus, arriving at the experimental cotton field. The cotton is sprayed both from the air and ground. This spray causes the foliage to drop and thereby aids in harvesting the fiber, drying the leaves so that the bowls can be picked by machine. From Fresno, President Abood flies to nearby San Francisco. San Francisco, a beautiful city in Northern California, is built on hillsides overlooking one of the largest bays in the United States. As he travels to the center of the city, President Abood sees the elaborate system of highways and expressways which link the city with its suburbs and outlying areas. The Mark Hopkins Hotel is President Abood's residence in San Francisco. A group of Sudanese welcome their president on his arrival in San Francisco. After dark, colorful San Francisco takes on a new brilliance. Leaving San Francisco, President Abood flies east 1,850 miles to Chicago. Chicago, the industrial giant of the Midwest. This, the second largest city in the United States, is the center of manufacturing, agriculture, and transportation for the region. Soon after his arrival in Chicago, President Abood tours the premises of the International Harvester Tractor Works. This large tractor is equipped to move earth and rocks to level the land. However, it can also pull many kinds of farm machines, such as plows, harrows, and reapers. President Abood is especially interested in the tractor works 
in relation to his own plans for the agricultural development of the Sudan. Once again taking to the air, President Aboud leaves Chicago. The face of this busy city gives evidence of its importance in the American economy. President Aboud's tour of the United States ends 750 miles away in New York, a city of eight million people and a thousand skyscrapers where Americans of all races and religions live and work together. New York's traditional welcome to visiting heads of state is accorded to President Abu. From the tallest buildings down to the sidewalks, throngs of Americans leave their work to welcome the visiting Sudanese leader. The enthusiastic reception given President Abu shows the warmth of America's friendship for the Sudan. From the crowd-filled street, President Aboud goes to the top of the highest building in the world, the Empire State Building. President Aboud views New York from the 102nd story observation platform, a thousand feet above the ground. An attractive sight is the profile of the United Nations building. After observing it from a distance, President Aboud arrives at the United Nations. President Aboud, who has often expressed his support for the United Nations, is greeted on his arrival by His Excellency Mangi Slim of Tunisia, President of the General Assembly. Mr. Bonji Slim then conducts President Aboud directly to the General Assembly Chamber. Delegates of more than 100 nations are waiting to hear an address by the Sudanese leader. لا يسعني في أول هذا المقام إلا أن أبادر. May I, at the outset, pay my country's respectful homage to the memory of our late Secretary General, His Excellency Mr. Dag Hammarskjöld, and the devoted officers of the United Nations who fell with him in the battle for peace. The loss of Mr. Hammarskjöld is not only a loss to a family, or to friends, or to his country, that great nation which has sacrificed much in its dedication to this organization. Mr. Hammarskjöld's loss is a grievous loss to humanity. We lost him at a time when men like him are so sorely needed. In the UN, as throughout his entire United States visit, President Aboud speaks about the aims and principles of the Sudan. He explains the Sudan's policies in favor of non-alignment, self-determination, and disarmament. He speaks strongly for greater aid to the underdeveloped countries and emphasizes his country's staunch support for the United Nations, which he describes as a temple of hope to preserve and promote the cause of peace and progress. May God bless our joint endeavors to live together in a world of peace, of harmony, and of human brotherhood. <laughs> the 
The delegates to the United Nations from Asian and African member nations meet with President Abu. The year 1961 is known as the Year of Africa at the United Nations, owing to the large number of new African nations admitted. President Aboud, the leader of the largest nation in Africa, is known as a good neighbor and a good friend. After a busy afternoon at the United Nations, President Aboud pays a personal call on an American family in their own home. This family, like most others in New York City, lives in an apartment within a large building. President Aboud is proudly shown the apartment by the whole family. The head of the family, Mr. Pitt, is a policeman for the New York Housing Authority. He maintains law and order and watches over the safety of housing project tenants. President Aboud is to fly back to Khartoum. A final memento is presented to the departing guest, a symbol of New York's friendship for the Sudan. President Aboud takes with him a farewell message. President Kennedy has conveyed to President Aboud his pleasure at the increased American understanding and respect for the Sudan and its people as a result of President Aboud's visit. As President Aboud returns to his own land, he departs with the knowledge that the bonds of friendship between the United States and the Sudan have been strengthened and that the two nations will continue to work together toward mutual goals in mutual trust.